Well, I just responded to your question. Yes, that's right. Um, at what point does that does nonviolence even as a tactic break down? The question of uh, nonviolence as a tactic or principle, even breaking down in SNCC, I myself trace to a debate by uh, Charlie Cobb inside of SNCC. I remember once, and my memory's not clear on the years, but it's in the early 60s, he raised the question, he said, okay, I'm a SNCC worker, he said, I'm nonviolent. He said, but I'm working in Mississippi, and I have to work with peasant families there, sharecropper families, and uh, these families are not nonviolent. So he gives the example of Miss Hamer. He said, okay, I go to work at Miss Hamer's house. Every time I go there as a SNCC field representative, the terrorist uh, groups shoot into a house. So he said, if these terrorist groups are shooting into her house, even though I'm nonviolent, she's not, they have guns in the house. If they are returning fire, the terrorist groups, what is my position as a SNCC person? Nobody in SNCC answered the question. Nobody. And when the question was not answered, it was clear then. Every SNCC person should make their own individual decision. And the decisions were clear. Those of us, and SNCC never saw, the overwhelming majority of people in SNCC never saw nonviolence as a philosophy, as did those in SCLC. For those in SNCC, it was just a tactic. If it could work, fine. If it can't work, we'll try something else. For SCLC, it had to work at all times, under all conditions. Nothing else could work, so it never came into the realm. So for those of us in SNCC who had this as a tactic, guns, uh, we began to carry guns uh, probably even a little bit before uh, this statement, which is in the early 60s, but I'm sure that by 1963, I would say 90% of your field staff in SNCC were carrying guns. Uh, of course, not publicly, but uh, I'm 90% of your field staff in Alabama and uh, Mississippi were definitely carrying guns by 1963.